you're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast, and check us out online at beardedtheologians.com. Podcast hosted by Matt Franks and Zach Bechtold. Okay, so this week on the Bearded Theologians, as we were kind of diving through and trying to figure out what topics to post on and, and topics to talk about, um, we were looking at the lectionary this week, and and this particular verse came out to us. It's Psalm one eleven, verse ten, and I'm actually going to read from the Common English uh, version. Um, it says, "Fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. Sure knowledge is for all who keep God's laws. God's praise lasts forever." And we kind of want to talk about um, this whole idea of fear. And so, Zach, as you as you see that verse, and and you know that there are probably people that are like listening to us at Saturday night, getting ready to write that sermon. Um, what are some things that, that that kind of pop up in your head as we think about uh, fear of the Lord? Well, I think I think it starts with that word fear. Um, for for a long time, I misunderstood that word uh, in in the context of of that fear of the Lord. Um, you know, we we think of fear. Um, as just that being afraid, uh, being scared. But in reality, that word fear, when it's used in this context is, is respect, um, re- respect, respect the Lord. Um, and, and so when we begin to reframe, uh, that, that idea, uh, um, and, and kind of do some, some wordplay and, and word understanding around fear when it's used and, and we begin to understand it as respect and not being afraid because there's a real big difference there. Um, you know, if you're afraid of somebody, you're not going to respond well. Um, you're not going to respond with, uh, <laughs> with wisdom. I mean, fear, the fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. That's such a, with, with our understanding of fear and being afraid or scared um, or timid or, you know, I, I think of my dogs in the room. So I think of dogs when they're afraid of somebody, they, they kind of shake or, or, uh, and cower, or they, they, they bulk up, you know, they, they puff up their chest and they bark. Um, and, and when we're afraid, do we do the same things? We either cower and go away and just, uh, get away from the situation or we, we hit it head on and we're going to attack. We're going to fight. But fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. When we understand that word in fear, a fear as respect, respect of the Lord is where wisdom begins. We begin to grow in our relationship with God in those moments. And, and we see God in different ways um, of, of being loving and, and, and wise rather than uh, just strictly powerful and, and something to be afraid of. Well, and as I was thinking about it, um, you know, we have that whole idea of, of respect, um, respect for and respect of and, and reverence and piety. And, um, you know, we think of fear and, and it's cripple, it, it's really can cripple, it really can cripple us or it can, um, I mean, and we look at today's society and we look that, that, you know, so September 11th, we're not, um, we're not the same people that we were. We, we, I really feel like we're a people who are just living in fear, uh, fear of the next mm-hmm. attack, fear of the next disaster, fear of the next flood. And, and we have to realize that like some of that stuff is, 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 is fixable. You know, there's some things that we can mm-hmm. change and then, and, you know, um, and I think that the, that's the struggle is that sometimes we fear, I, I love that line from Batman, uh, Batman begins, you know, people fear what they do not understand. And right. I think that that's a lot of our problem is that we don't want to go learn about these people or about things that are causing these harms or, um, we don't have respect for it or, you know, just whatever. And I think that that's what kind of motivates our fears. And sometimes we just have general fears. I mean, I think of people that have um, struggle of, of flying in planes and, and spiders and snakes and all those, those things. Um, you know, there, there's some, this, there's some understanding of fear, but I think when it comes to God, it is more about the respect and we either respect God or we don't respect God. And, and, and that's, we get in trouble when we don't respect God. Um, and we can find ourselves lost and, you know, mm-hmm. and so on. And I just, I, don't know, I just always find that whole idea of fear of the Lord. Um, you know, fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. And I think that's, right. if we think of it in the attitude of respect, we're going to learn about, you know, God and we're going to learn, um, you know, we're going to try to understand God. And I think that's when we get our respect. And um, I just always find that interesting when we talk about that. 
Right. So, so looking in this really fun theological dictionary I have, um, it talks, uh, it's got fear of God or fear of the Lord. Um, and it talks about the word used here. That's fear. Um, in the Hebrew meaning awe, being in awe of God. And, and even in that regard, there's a big difference than being afraid and being in awe. 3374. And um, so, so where I grew up um, in, in the way that, that the fear of, fear of the Lord was taught wasn't in one of respect. It wasn't in one of awe. It was one in fear. Um, fear God, because if you mess up, God will punish you. And I, I just, it's not, I don't think that's right. Um, and I don't know that that's the right way to have a relationship with God. And, um, I look back and I spent too many years being a part of things that did that very thing, tried to put the fear of God in people so that they would follow God. And, and those types of relationships, I mean, gosh, if, if, even if you just think of it on a personal level, if you're afraid of somebody and you're like, well, I'm going to go be their friend. So I'm not afraid of them anymore. That relationship's likely not going to last. Um, and so why do we think a relationship of that nature being afraid that God's going to punish us if we're not his friend, if we don't follow him, is going to last. I mean, that's, that's such a, it just builds a shallow foundation that the first thing that happens or first thing that goes wrong or the first, you know, bad day we have we're out on God because God wasn't there you know or, or God's punishing us and we're afraid of it I mean there's just there's so much there theologically that that people teach in such a unhealthy way and and so to reframe that of of respect of awe you know being in awe of the Lord is where wisdom begins that's that's a big difference um it's interesting well, and I think that that's the deal is like fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. Um, sure knowledge is for all who keep God's laws. And I think of when, you know, we want to build a relationship with someone. We want to get to know them. We want to know what the boundaries are. We want to know like right. what we can and cannot do. And that's how we gain respect. And that's how we understand mm -hmm. each other a little bit better. And I think mm -hmm. when we um, are afraid, it's because we don't want to do one of those things. We either don't right. want to get to know the person or the thing, or we don't want, to understand or we don't want to find ourselves in a place of um, acceptance. And, and, the, and I think there's a difference between, you know, you can respect someone and you can love someone, but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to be like them or you don't have to be them. And I right. think that, I think what we've done is, is we've mirrored the two and saying that respect and love and, and all those words that kind of go with that meaning that you have to line up with them. You can mm. respect someone and disagree with them. I mean, I, I call yeah. that two days. Um, right. Right. <laughs> You know, there are a lot of people I disagree with theologically, but I love and respect them. And I think that that's a huge difference um, that, that we must understand is that there is a difference between that, um, you know, love and respect is different than acceptance and like trying to be like, and I think that that's a, that's a whole thing to, to kind of ponder. It, it is. And, and, you know, just thinking about that relationship that we have with God uh, and going kind of back to my dog analogy, you know, we're not just cowering in the corner waiting for God to, to punish. That's not how, how God works. That's not the relationship God wants. Um, and so knowing on our end, those boundaries, um, or getting to know here's where we are in this relationship, uh, with God and with people and, and how we respond to certain things in, and it's usually us beating ourselves up for something, uh, that we've done, um, that breaks those two communities. It's, it's not God beating us up. It's us beating us up over guilt or shame or, or whatever um, that are, are, are undeserved. I mean, that, I think that's where, where grace comes in. And, and maybe that idea of sure knowledge that here we are, you know, grace is, grace is abound and, and it's going to be okay. Well, and I find that like, so I was thinking, I was, yesterday I was watching this thing on sports on ESPN and it was talking about Shaq on when sports it was on, on sports uh, ESPN. Um, yeah, that thing uh, <laughs> shows you how much I watch the sports um, sports ball. <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> uh, no, pitchers and catchers are reporting in two weeks. Um, yes, they are. Thank God. Um, but but here's the thing: Shaq was talking about his free throw issue, and his mm. free throw. What, what he talked about, and 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 I found this really interesting: Shaq's free throw issue had to deal with the disappointment of the fans 
And mm-hmm. so when he would catch the ball to shoot the free throw, and he'd shoot the first free throw, and he'd miss it, and he'd see the fan, you know, like, ah, and he felt like he let that fan down. Well, mm. when, when you allow that fear into your life of letting someone down or letting, you know, just, like, people down, you're going to miss the next one. And so, like, right. and, and when he talked about that, it, like, the, the bell went off in my, like, it's like, wow, how often do we find ourselves failing because mm. we have our focus on the wrong thing? And, right. and, and all Shaq had to do, all the adjustment that he had to do was instead of looking at the fans, thinking about, okay, what does it take to put the ball in, do the right thing, the right mm-hmm. mechanics, and do it every time like that. And right. it, it's, I think it's the same thing with our faith, is that like when we lose focus of what we're supposed to be doing and, and the calling that God has upon our lives, we enter into this fear of failure. We enter into this fear of um, being stuck in a pit or in, in this fear of, of you know, just failure and and the great thing is is that we're given a do-over through jesus christ and um mm-hmm. you know our faith in him allows us to make that adjustment and and, and to shoot better um right. and, and i just you know that's just kind of, one of those things that just kind of blah yeah no no and that makes total sense um a buddy of mine the other day or this week he um he was preaching and they his um but they put a clip of it on on facebook and he was talking about fear and doubt and the difference there um in in i'm positive you didn't come up with it uh other people have said it too but but fear or doubt is not the opposite of faith fear is um you know doubt allows us to ask questions and dig deeper fear pushes us away uh from doing anything but running um you know and and that's you're right i mean that that shack analogy or that shack story is great because you know the fear of missing a free throw pushed him away from making free throws uh but when 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 you gets away from that mindset and says, here's the goal at hand to come closer. You know, when we push uh, all of our down, our, our shortcomings and our downfalls and all the things that we, we let hold us back and say, I'm not going to be afraid of this. I'm going to be faithful and see, see the awe in God, see the respect in God and move forward towards that grace. Um, that's where, I think that's where the shift begins. And I think that that's, I, I, you know, I think that's the challenge this week. Ask yourself, what are you afraid of? And then ask yeah. yourself, why are you afraid of it? Why? I think, what, yeah. I think when you start wrestling with those two, what are you afraid of and why are you afraid of it? Mm-hmm. Start to see how you can actually, some of those things are um, beatable. Some of those things you can yeah. actually you know, improve on. And I think that that's a kind of a good thing to, to reflect on today is, is the why. And, and you know, what are you afraid of and why are you afraid of it? And So mm-hmm. we want to encourage you to do that this week. Uh, go on our website, um, like our posts and all that good stuff that we've got going up. We've got some really great gear. Um, that you can purchase. Um, Zach and I are going to be in Denver, uh, February yeah. 4th uh, through the 8th. And mm-hmm. uh, if you're in the Denver area, we'd love to, to catch up with you and, and maybe come have a pint with us. Um, yes. And um, we're going to be doing some stuff for ILIF and we're looking forward to interviewing uh, some great scholars and, and yeah. pastors in their fields. And, and we're really excited about this and what this is going to do. Um, not only is it going to create some really good content for you all to hear, but um, mm-hmm. we're looking forward to uh, being a part of that experience at the Renewal Conference. Yeah. Um, we're thankful for Isla for inviting us to be a part of yes. that. And, um, but we also need you. Here's what we need from you. And um, we need you to go on Google Play or uh, iTunes, whatever you listen to us to, and, and give us some good ratings. Those good ratings uh, get us out there a little bit more. Right. Uh, you know, we always tell everybody to encourage to listen from, you know, last year on, because uh, mm-hmm. we really do believe that first year. <laughs> that first year was, was, was a little bit of a test, and we really feel like right now um, <laughs> we're, we're actually know what we're doing a little bit. <laughs> Maybe. But, Maybe. Um, you know, we want to encourage you to give us some feedback and all that good stuff. Right. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we are thankful for our listeners. And uh, so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. We hope you've enjoyed listening and we hope that you share our content online uh, through Facebook and social media. And we hope that you check out our uh, Beardcast store at beardedtheologians.com and pick up some great Bearded Theologians gear. We hope you have a good day. much as I want to sit here and dance, buddy. I know.